What's going on everyone? It's the fake weeb here and wow this chapter is definitely one of the best chapters in the culling games at least in my opinion. The way Gege can just be so creative in his writing and deliver such emotional impact like man this was some deep shit right here. But as always guys before I start my review I would kindly appreciate if you can drop a like on the video as that would help me out a ton and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright, so the chapter starts with what looks like a flashback at first, but it turns out this is actually not a flashback. And to explain what I mean, we need to quickly go over Panda's abilities and recap what happened in the last chapter. So from the beginning of the story, back at the Kyoto Sister School arc, we learned that Panda is an abrupt mutation cursed corpse with self-awareness and self sustaining cursed energy. The person who created Panda, that's Principal Yaga, put three spiritual cores inside his body that resemble his siblings. He can use the cores of his siblings to grant him more strength. The first core is his own core, the balance type, which is the normal Panda we see every day. The second core is his brother's gorilla mode type, which is a stronger and faster version of Panda that's shaped like a muscular gorilla. The third core is his sister's Triceratops mode, which we didn't really know much about as Hajime literally destroyed this mode in one attack. But that's the point. When fighting Hajime in the last chapter, Panda ended up using two of his siblings' cores, the gorilla mode and the Triceratops mode, which both got destroyed by Hajime in an instant. Now, even if those cores cores are destroyed, we didn't really know if they were gone forever, like at the time we knew that if Panda had lost two cores, he would still be alive as he would have one more left. To completely kill Panda, you need to destroy all three of his cores that are located inside his body, but we just assume that the destroyed cores could be repaired as long as Panda didn't lose his third one. But in this chapter, I guess it kind of confirms that the destroyed cores can't be repaired as it opens up with again like I said earlier a supposed flashback of a young panda and his siblings but this flashback isn't real we're just seeing this lovey-dovey scenario or like make-believe backstory as a tribute to the deaths of panda's siblings for example in the mock-up flashback we see this balloon that's referred to dad by brother gorilla which we can assume resembles Yaga. And since Yaga had died already, he's now taking Panda's brother and Panda's sister away to the afterlife. It's like a figurative way to show that the siblings just died from Hajime. Hajime destroyed their cores in the last chapter. Also, if we go back to chapter 39, when Yaga first mentions that Panda has siblings, Panda is like, no, I do not, which confirms that the backstory never happened because Panda doesn't even recall his own siblings. I think having this make-believe backstory though was such a creative way for Gege to tell us that two of his siblings are dead and he can't use their cores ever again. The backstory itself is very cute, funny, and emotional. I loved every bit of it, the dynamic between Panda and his siblings, Panda and his brother, Panda and his sister, the sister to the brother, the symbolisms, the dialogue, I mean, this reminds me of the Higaruma chapter when we got his backstory. I think it definitely meets that quality of writing. Like, I did not expect to wake up and bawl my eyes out on a Friday morning. I love this make-believe backstory so much. Also, I couldn't help but point out that the young brother gorilla looks a lot like the author from Gintama or the gorilla profile picture he uses, so I'm not sure if Gege had an intention of drawing the gorilla gorilla like that, but I'd find it pretty cool if the author likes Gintama. Moving on from the make-believe sad flashback, we go back to the battlefield as Hajime literally demolishes 
panda's entire body. However, Hajime doesn't gain any points from the Kogane, which means that he hasn't truly killed Panda yet. Now, how is Panda not dead after he's been decapitated? His whole body's been obliterated as it's just his head that's left. Well, like I said earlier when explaining Panda's abilities, if either one of his cores are damaged, then Panda can't transform into that broken form. So let's say the Gorilla Core is damaged, then he wouldn't be able to use the Gorilla Mode, only his Balance type and his Triceratops type. But if all the cores are damaged, then Panda would truly die since he lives off of those three cores. But what's important is the location of each spiritual core. His Balance type is located in his head, the Gorilla Mode type is located at his back, and the Triceratops Mode is located located in his stomach. In the last chapter, Hajime destroys Panda's entire body, as we also see in this chapter, which breaks his sister and brother's core, since they were located at Panda's upper and lower body. However, Panda still has one core left in his head, which Hajime hasn't finished off yet, so that is why Panda is still alive. Hajime picks Panda's head with his pole, which looks absolutely gruesome, but Panda still wouldn't budge about Sukuna. Panda is just a warrior, like, I, I liked Panda before, but after reading this chapter, seeing his love for his siblings, and then losing them too after already losing a lot, still not wanting to rat out Yuji, like, that is a freaking bro right there, and yeah, I mean, you can't help but just feel bad and respect for him. As Hajime is about to finish off Panda's head, where his last core is from, our man Hakari comes in clutch and sees Panda without his body commenting, Yo, Panda, did you lose some weight? And Panda is just so glad to see him here as he says his name with relief. And Hajime feels Hakari's strength. He senses his huge amount of rigid cursed energy as he says, Oi, don't you get me too excited. Wow, what an amazing chapter from, again, the love of Panda to his siblings to Hockney arriving at the end. I'm pretty sure most of us predicted that this would happen. I remember I mentioned that in my last chapter review video, saying that Hockney could join in and help Panda, but that also means that Hockney, I guess, might have killed Charles, or maybe Charles admitted defeat and Hockney just stopped the domain himself. To be completely completely honest, I don't really care about Charles, so I wouldn't mind if he died, but nonetheless, we see Hockady coming down, literally destroying multiple cargo crates, which is insane. Even someone like Yuji, who's unnaturally physically strong, if he were to jump and land on a bunch of shipping containers, he's probably just putting a dent at best. So yeah, Hockady is just fired up right now, and we see his cursed energy being so enormous, which is most likely due to the effect of the jackpots he won in his fight with Charles. Every time Hockady hits a jackpot, he gets some sort of boost in power, but at that time, we didn't know if Hockady could just stack his jackpot rewards or even use his jackpot rewards outside of his domain. But I guess he could, as we see in this chapter, and however many times Hockady hit a jackpot in his fight with Charles, those effects are being kept in his fight with Kashimo. Super stoked to see this battle is gonna be interesting for sure, you know, to see the outcome of who wins. I think it's very 50-50 for both characters, not just considering, like, how strong they are, but considering, like, how much they mean to the story in a narrative way, so I'll definitely make a prediction video on who I see winning. You guys might not like my prediction, I already have my take on who's gonna win, but definitely let me know yours in the comment section down below. Also, what did you think of this chapter? Did did you love it? Hate it? Any comments on the future of Panda? I'd love to hear your thoughts. As you guys know, I do read the comment section. But, uh, yeah. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching another one of my Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reviews. It's been the fake weeb, and I'm out. Peace.